Good morning and welcome to Monday Morning Prayer. And it's good to see that our dear sister Jan is with us this morning and those who've not logged in, you're welcome. Forgive me, I'm chewing a lozenger because of a throat. <laughs> we light this light this morning and we remember the children of God. 20 million, they expect, will be affected by a raging famine in the Sudan, Nigeria, the Yemen, in places where there is conflict and war and where the elderly, the children and young families will be exposed to severe famine. It's already started, so we pray today that the mighty children of God who are in a position to help will donate and give generously to this worthy cause. For we shouldn't allow such catastrophes, especially when you see the food mountains and the waste of food. So we pray, Almighty God, bless your children this day and protect them from this dreadful famine. Amen. Little poppy's just gone running out 90 mile an hour. <laughs> Our morning prologue for this Monday morning, we enter the eternal and infinite garden with reverence to the heavenly Father, Mother God, the earthly Mother, and all the great masters and reverence to the holy, pure and saving teaching and reverence to the brotherhood and sisterhood of the elect. Monday morning, we commune with the angel of life saying, Angel of life, enter my limbs and give strength to my whole body. You now contemplate trees as you feel yourself absorbing vital healing energy forces from the trees and forests of the Creator's garden. Amen. We begin with our first reading and it's from Meditations Now and it's a daily reading from Monday the 13th of March. So bear with me, here we go. And the theme is keep faith. Our Commonwealth is in heaven and from it we await a savior, the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a verse taken from Paul's letter to the Philippines chapter three, verses 20. Stand firm thus in the Lord, exhorts the Apostle Paul to his friends and co-ministers at Philippi. He even dared to enjoin them, to imitate them, and mark those who so live as you have an example in us. Paul was writing this injunction while in one of the several prisons in which he and his colleagues were often incarcerated. From that time until this, jail sentences have often been the lot of those who have sincerely, if not always wisely, sought to follow in the steps and in the teachings of Jesus. Paul was not suggesting that a jail sentence was inevitable if one is to obey God rather than men. Man-made laws are supposedly for the benefit of all, pagans and believers alike. Conflicts, adversities, sufferings of one sort or another are inevitable. They are sometimes the consequence of keeping the faith. They are always associated with living in this jointed world and are as much a part of life as our very environment. Over and above this life and this world in which we live, however, is the inevitability of life everlasting, the sure hope and the assurance that our commonwealth is in heaven, the guarantee that the Lord Jesus Christ will change our lowly body to be like his glorious body. Thus we are enjoined to keep the faith, 
it will be worth it despite all of the difficult and painful things that happen here. As Paul writes in another one of his letters, the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory that is to be revealed to us. And we conclude here with a little reflective prayer. O oh Lord, I need your grace to keep on believing, to hold firmly to the glorious gospel of my salvation, and to dedicate daily my life to thanksgiving and praises, even as I serve you in the process of serving your children about me. Isn't that a lovely reading? But what is the reading saying to you? Just reflect for a moment. What is the reading saying to your heart? What is Jesus trying to say to you? So many have this belief that they can get through this life without suffering, that everything is going to be like a, a honeymoon. They're mistaken because the beloved Christ suffered for us. And you find that those closest to Christ, he often gives them more than their fair share of suffering because he knows that they will endure it and bless it. But I don't volunteer for suffering. I don't believe in pain. I believe in killing pain. That's what we were told as young student nurses. Kill the pain before the pain kills the patient. I don't volunteer my services to Christ, say, Lord, bring it on, because having had a fair amount of pain, I do let my heart reflect more on trying to discern what is God asking of us today. And if pain is part of that, then what do we do? We come to the Lord and we say, Lord, give me the strength to endure what you are asking of me. And that's okay too. Our next reading is from Psalms now. Psalm 97. I can't even see the sun this morning, true. The coastal fog has blotted out heaven's light and the early hours are cold and damp. But God is here, in me and around me, and I will rejoice in him. I hear no angel choirs. There are no church bells to summon me to worship. There are only the thunder of four-wheel vehicles and the acrid odour of exhaust fumes as men rush forth to their unnumbered shrines and pursue their avaricious goals. But God is here, and I will rejoice in him. I cannot see the mountain or smell the flowers or even hear the song of birds. I cannot love the people who bustle about me. I see unhappiness and injustice and depravity. I hear the ear grating sounds of pain and complaint. I feel the stifling pressures that suck me into the stream that rushes by my door. But God is here, in me and around me, and I will rejoice in him. Our great God does care for his creatures. He secures forever those who relate to him. He is here, he is in us, and he is around us. Let us all rejoice in him this morning. Let us be still in the presence of God's love. Let there be no fear in our heart as we come to this table of love. God is here. 
and opening this little book of comfort and healing, prayers of inspiration from many faiths. We read from the section, God tests our detachment. From the Buddhist tradition, we read, if by giving up a small pleasure, one sees a great pleasure, the wise will let go of the small pleasure and look to the great one. And from Sikhism, the gold is touched to the touchstone and tested by fire. When its pure colour shows through, it is pleasing to the eye of the assayer. And from the Baha'i faith, the mind and spirit of man advance when he is tried by suffering. The more the ground is ploughed, the better the seed will grow, the better the harvest will be. Just as the plough furrows the earth deeply, purifying it of weeds and nettles and thistles, so suffering and tribulation free man from the petty affairs of this worldly life until he arrives at a state of complete detachment. His attitude in this world will be that of divine happiness. Man is, so to speak, unripe. The heat of the fire of suffering will mature him. Look back to the times past and you will find that the greatest men have suffered the most. And from Hinduism we read, The man alone is wise who keeps the mastery of himself if one deals with objects of the sense, not loving and not hating, making them serve his free soul which rests serenely, Lord, lo. Such a man comes to tranquillity, and out of that tranquillity shall rise the end and healing of his earthly pains, since the will governed sets the soul at peace. <coughs> beautiful, beautiful prayers. And from Judaism, a cheerful heart, is as good as good medicine. And from Taoism, one who is content to be content may always be content. And from Hinduism, all things arise, suffer change, and pass away. This is their nature. When you know this, nothing perturbs you, nothing hurts you. You become still. It is easy. And finally, from our Buddhist brothers and sisters, encountering sufferings will definitely contribute to the elevation of your spiritual practice, provided you are able to transform calamity and misfortune into the path. Wow. And now we come to a special reading for Lent from the Divine Office of Lords for this Monday morning. Just bear with me. Up, up, seeing a page. Now, sorry about that. This is so old, all the pages are sticking. Gotcha. Now, and the scripture is from the book of Exodus. Chapter 19, verses 4 to 6a. You have seen how I bore you on eagles' wings and brought you to myself. Now therefore, if you will obey my voice and keep my covenant, you shall be my own possession among all peoples. For all the earth is mine, and you shall be to me a kingdom of priests. And a holy nation. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. <clears throat> and the short responsory, it is he who will free me from the snare of the hunters. It is he who will free me from the snare of the hunters and from the evil word. It is he who will free me from the snare of the hunters. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God. It is he who will free me 
from the snare of the hunters. And the Benedictus Antiphon, be compassionate as your Father, Mother, God are compassionate, says the Lord. Okay, and now I invite you to join me for the beautiful canticle of Zechariah, the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel. <coughs> Excuse me. He has visited his people and he has redeemed them. He has raised up for us a mighty saviour in the house of David, his servant, as he promised through his prophets from of old, a saviour who would free us from our sin from the hands of all our enemies, so his love for our fathers is revealed and his holy covenant remembered. He swore to Abraham, our father, to grant us that free from fear and safe from the hands of our enemies, we might serve him in holiness and justice all the days of our life in his presence. And as for you, little child, you shall become a prophet of God the Most High. You shall go before the Lord to prepare his ways before him, to make known to his people their salvation through forgiveness of their sin and the loving kindness of the heart of our God, who visits us like the dawn from on high, and he will give light to those who sit in darkness, and those who dwell in the shadow of death, he will guide them to the way of peace. Glory be to the Father, Mother God, to the Lord Jesus Christ, our teacher, to the Holy Spirit of God, as it was in the beginning, is now and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Be compassionate as your heavenly Father, Mother God, are compassionate, says the Lord. And now we come to our morning intercessions. Blessed be the God and Father Mother of our Lord Jesus Christ. On this day of Lent, he has given us the grace of offering the sacrifice of praise. Let us pray to him with confidence, response, Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. Almighty Father, Mother God, Grant us a spirit of prayer and penance. Grant that we may love you and love one another. Response, Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. Let us work with you to restore all things in Christ, to renew the world through your justice and peace. Response, Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. In the name of every creature under heaven, we praise you. Teach us to respect all that you have made. Response, Lord, transform our lives by your divine teaching. Forgive us for the times we have failed Christ in the poor. Have mercy on us in our weakness. Response, Lord, transform our lives by your teaching. Just excuse me, we've got a naughty monastic here at the door called Brother Louis. Come in, and Poppy. Come in, you two. I tell you, they rule this monastery. Now be good. So let us now, in the stillness of this hour, give thanks to God for these two little monsters who are adorable. Let us just bring whatever may be ailing us, troubling us, to the Lord and leave it with the Lord instead of taking it back. So if there is something in your life today that's really annoying you, debilitating you, or causing you deep anxiety, name it, bless it, it's yours, and give it to God in a mindset of gratitude and leave it with God and come back and say thank you. Thank you for setting me free from this. And keep saying thank you. Let us now be still for a moment and share with Christ whatever may be causing us disquiet this morning.
keep watch with me. When we began our morning prayer, we brought to mind the plight of 20,000 of God's children who are now beginning to experience the impact of the world's greatest famine in Nigeria, Sudan, the Yemen, and parts of the Middle East. Their animals have died there is no water and there has been no water to feed their crops. Children are unable to suckle on the mother's breast because there's nothing there, because the poor man, mother is just standing. Grandparents are falling by the wayside. Let us bring our brothers and sisters, members of the mystical body of Christ, to our Father, Mother, God and say, Hear our prayer. Hear our prayer for these beautiful people whose lives are torn by war, who are the innocent victims of corrupt regimes. We pray that the United Nations will rally the troops and dispel all these wars and bring to task those culpable of bringing this famine on to its people. And we pray for each one of you. We pray for dear Jan and her family there in St. Helens, for each one who've not logged in, for the brothers and sisters of our community, especially our amazing troubadours who are in training, dear Nancy in Mexico, Jackie in Idaho, Buffy in New York, Matthew in Texas, Brother Brian, our Franciscan trucker, who goes from state to state, Brother Liam in London, and dear Sister Jane in Coventry, Sister Diane in Lee. But we pray for those who have chosen to live the hermetic life with no connection to the internet or to the outside world. Sister Miriam in New Zealand, who's really struggling with mental health issues since she moved from the south to the north of the island. Brother Harry, again afflicted with mental health issues. We pray for our community here, for Brother Rob, Paul and myself. We remember dear Olivia who came down last week with a recurrent um, exacerbation of her bronchitis. We pray for dear Olivia and we pray for Elaine and Peter Lee Sister Elaine, we pray for Eleanor and Elizabeth for their protection tomorrow when they were, they're told they're going to have 12 inches of snow, my word, for Murray. We pray for our dear next door neighbour Noring who's been in and out of hospital this week like a yo-yo and who sadly yesterday morning had to have the doctor and an ambulance. They're suspecting now a clot on her lung. And she wrote, looked really, really poorly. So we pray for Noreen. But we pray for God's children who are ill in our hospitals and care centres, in our hospices, and for the amazing men and women who've given their lives to caring for them. And we pray today for all those in prison and on death row, for our young people, many of whom are opting out, choosing to end their sacred contract, and recently, one of the illicit drugs to hit Manchester that's turning young people into zombies where they just stand or lean over asleep, totally shut down. And they're everywhere. So we pray for the emergency drug services and the volunteer groups that they're given the funding to re-educate our young people not to take these illicit happy drugs, whatever they're called, but it's scary to see them. They're just like zombies. So we pray for our young people, many of whom need love and support. Many of them are filial children, 
from dysfunctional homes and families. So let us pray. Oh, sorry, with Jan, we hold all on our prayer list. Yes, we do. And I pray for our dear sister in Al Albuquerque in Canada, Corazon de, de los Santos with her son Daniel and her brother Faustia and Fastion. And we pray for Syria and all refugees. Yes, of course. And we pray for the many who've asked for prayer. We now pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, Mother God, hallowed be your name, your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give to each one of us here today our daily bread. Forgive us our misdemeanors, our selfishness, our self-centeredness. Lead us not astray, but protect us from the forces of evil, negativity, despair, and hopelessness. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Amen. And instead of our closing prayer, I'm going to read this, which I got from the Unitarian Chapel three weeks ago, and it's lovely. God has no hands but our hands to do his work today. He has no feet but our feet to lead men in his way. He has no tongue but our tongues to tell men how he died. He has no help but our help to bring them to his side. We are the only Bible the careless world will read. We are the sinner's gospel. We are the scoffer's creed. We are the Lord's last message given in deed and word. What if the type is crooked? What if the print is blurred? What if our hands are busy with other work than his? What if our feet are walking where sin's allurement is? What if our tongues are speaking? How can we hope of things his lips would spurn? How can we hope to help him and hasten his return? Isn't that a beautiful, beautiful poem? Well, go in peace to love and to serve our God. And just quietly we take a deep breath and we breathe in the breath of the Holy Spirit as we say, breathe on all here, O breath of God. Fill us with life anew that we might love what thou dost love and do what thou wouldst do. And as I blow out this flame, I call on our Father, Mother, God, a God who has many names. I call on the angelic realm, the messengers of God. I call on all the saints in the Christian tradition, and I call on all the holy men and women, the prophets and teachers of different beliefs and our ascended masters. And we say, protect your children today Protect us from harm and please prevent this awful catastrophe where two million are expected to die of famine. Amen. So go in peace to love and to serve our God. And I think the sun is trying to come out. Alleluia. Namaste. Shalom. Inshallah. Bagzat Bonum. Om Shanti. Solo di Caritas. Salam alaikum, and may the peace of our God, your God, reawaken in your heart today that you are a beloved of God and that your life does matter. Amen. Thank you for joining me, and I look forward to your company again. God bless, have a lovely day, and if it's your bedtime, sleep well.